This boss is the Miasmic Tumor, and the player fights it at the end of the Cleansing quest line in Inazuma. We're going to drop into this boss location here, and you can see the edge of the screen are tinted purple, which means that we are being affected by Bale Thunder. And what we want to do is grab an Electrogranum from those little plants you see around there, and as long as you have an Electrogranum on you, you will not take damage over time from Bale Thunder. Now there's something important to note about Bale Thunder. You might be tempted to try blocking it using a shield, like Zhongli's shield that you're going to see me use right here. You can't actually do this. Shielding does not prevent Bale Thunder damage. The only thing that can leave your health bar protected is by picking up an Electrogranum and keeping it on you. Now the thing about Electrograna is not only do they run out by themselves just by time passing, they can only block a certain amount of damage instances. So depending on how much you've leveled up your Sacred Sakura Tree, you cannot count on a single Electrogranum to just, you know, perpetually block all your Bale Thunder damage. You need to be reapplying them, you need to be picking them back up from these plants. So the mechanics of this boss fight essentially build on the things that the game has been teaching you through the quest line leading up to it. And what those things are is, you know, defeating these samurai spirit warriors, and this causes them to create these diagrams that show you the way you need to route energy through all of these lamps. And what you do then is you route the energy through the lamps in the right order, you pray at the origin point, which is this first one here, and from here is where you can also read the diagram in the middle accurately. Once you route energy through the lamps correctly, the tumor will hit the ground and you're able to get a damage phase. You can do some damage to it. Just make sure that if you have a mix of short and tall characters, don't get a short character stuck under the tumor because it won't let you switch to your taller characters. They, they lack the space for it. So you might have to back up a bit if you want to switch to a Zhongli or a child or something. Of course, we should be reapplying Electrograna to ourselves the entire time here, but because I want to deal maximum damage, I don't end up doing that. And in fact, I still don't have an Electrogranum on me right now, uh, to my knowledge anyway. I should be taking steady amounts of Bale Thunder damage over time. But anyway, we're going to focus on this samurai, try to remove him as fast as possible to get the next diagram to spawn. There it is, we can pick up an Electrogranum here. So it's 1, 2 on the left, 3 ahead of it, 4 across. Uh, let me pick up one of these again. Four across, and then five for the last one. We'll go back to the first point, we'll pray at it, drop the tumor, and get another damage phase. Once again, do be careful not to try switching to a tall character when you're stuck under it. In this final phase it spawns two of these, so I use Bennett's Burst uh, to chill in the middle. This also helps me uh, regain some of my health that gets damaged by Bale Thunder, and it'll buff my damage. Since there's two of them, I want to remove both of them as fast as possible, and it helps to kind of make them both cluster up on me at the same point. So, once they're both done, we can route the final diagram. Uh, this one's pretty cool. You just it's symmetrical on both sides, so you just do two and then three. You do two on the first two and then you do three on the second two. And it'll route it accordingly. There we go.
and this should be the final damage phase. I really like this quest chain, and I like the ending of this quest. It's a pretty neat puzzle boss. Uh, it doesn't take too much brain power to figure out. You know, it's pretty obvious if you've if you've managed to finish the previous quest steps up until now, then you'll you'll definitely finish this. But I just really appreciate this kind of layered quest design where it builds on itself bit by bit until by the end of it, you know, you you have a cool boss fight and. Even the reward drops that you get from finishing this quest chain feel very appropriate for, you know, a quest in an RPG. Which I think is a testament to how MiHoYo has steadily been improving their game's design, their, their gameplay design, their visuals, um, their storytelling, their music. And it's just been really nice to see this game improve over time instead of, like, just stagnating. It takes a lot of time to bring out a huge expansion like this with a bunch of quests and a bunch of content, and I'm, I'm happy that it's here now because I'm sure a lot of Genshin Impact players know that when there is no content, when there is like a huge dry period, you know, you're pretty much just farming for stuff every day, and there's not all that much to do. But now, you know, we've kind of been blessed with a bunch of new content, we're able to enjoy a whole new region, we're able to enjoy um, new main quests, new side quests, interesting bosses, interesting rewards. So yeah, when this cutscene is over, you can pick up Kazari's mask, it'll get added to your inventory, and when you interact with it in your inventory, you'll get the blueprint to craft Hakushin Ring, which is uh, a four-star craftable catalyst, so it's a free-to-play weapon. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll have a lot more Genshin Impact stuff coming up. May the night keep you safe.